everyone has uh, everyone has a mouth, right? And in the mouth, they should have teeth. And unfortunately, all the teeth aren't the same. If you look, just look at your friends. This one has beautiful teeth. This one has terrible teeth. This one has mediocre teeth. This one has no teeth. You know, everybody has. Everyone has something in their mouth. And so we want to know, though, what we can do to preserve the good teeth we were born with, if we were born with it. And that's another subject to ask our expert, Dr. S. Robert Davidoff, who is what we call a prosthodontist. So welcome to the show, Dr. Davidoff. Thank you, Anita. It's a pleasure to be here again. Well, thank you. Uh, Is it true I said that everybody is born with teeth, but they're probably not all the same good teeth, are they? I just said that casually. Well, you know, you're talking now about genetics, so everybody's different. And when we're born, actually, we don't have any teeth uh, for a little bit. And then those, what they call the baby teeth, come in. And here's the real problem. When you lose the baby teeth, they're replaced by the permanent teeth. But they're not permanent, Anita. Things can happen to those things uh, because of neglect, because of abuse, uh, drinking a lot of soda, whatever you want to do. There are things that you can do that will harm your teeth, and there are certainly things that you can do to help preserve them and make them more permanent for your life. Well, that's a good segue, isn't it, into what I asked Dr. Davidoff about about what we should do to preserve our teeth. And, you know, you see people, as you said, drinking a lot of soda. We only talk about what that does. But other kinds of things, they eat carrots, they eat hard candy, they eat, they, they smoke, they, they drink a lot of coffee, they do things. And maybe, and I'll make a list as you uh, talk, maybe that's a good article for you to write in the future, actually, as it could be very interesting. I think people would cut it out. So, of course, he writes an article for us every month in Boomer Times, and, and we're so privileged to have him here on our radio show. Start telling us about, if you could have maybe, let's go with five, maybe you have ten tips of what people should avoid if they could. Well, when you're talking about what they should avoid, the, the biggest thing is sugars that stick to the teeth or stay in the mouth for a long time. Decay is caused by bacteria eating sugar. It's as simple as that. And enamel, while it's strong, is certainly not impervious to uh, bacteria and sugar and ultimately decay. Okay, but if we brush our teeth after we eat that, isn't that good enough? It depends upon how well you brush your teeth and And how fastidious you are about brushing every time you do eat something. Uh, nobody's going to judge, have a snack and then run into the bathroom and brush their teeth at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at work. It just doesn't happen. It would probably be helpful and nice, but it doesn't happen. So you said sugar. So are you saying we have a dessert at lunch? That's sugar. Well, there there's better things with sugar and worse things fruit. with sugar. Fruit is sugar. but is uh, it? Fruit is sugar, and fruit is probably better to eat because it has some actual cleansing possibilities, and the sugar doesn't actually stick to the teeth and stay around so much. So, yeah, if you're going to eat a snack or something, a piece of fruit would probably be good. What wouldn't be good would be a candy, especially a hard candy that you have to break with your teeth or might break your teeth. Um, You don't want to eat any toffees or stuff like that. Once in a while, sure. But as a general rule, you don't want to eat stuff that sticks to your, sticks to the teeth and sticks in the crevices around the gums, snicker bars, um, all those things with nougat and caramel and, and stuff like that. Oh, well, that'll, uh, that'll disappoint quite a few people <laughs> I know. But, uh, but I want to go back to what you just said about the sugar aspect. So there are sugars, but they are then... Healthy sugars, and, and I, as I said, so you could have a, an apple. Like I love apples. Now that's sugar, but there's a lot of good stuff in an apple. Isn't yeah, there? there's nothing wrong with eating an apple, and and if you eat an apple a day, your teeth will be fine. All right, uh, if everything else is okay. But there are certain things, you know, most people aren't aware, especially mothers that are giving their kids peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. The absolute worst thing for teeth is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Oh, my goodness. It's loaded with carbohydrates. It's loaded with sugar. It's sticky. It stays there. And we know very well all the studies that have been done, it causes high rates of decay in children. And adults if they eat a lot of it, too. 
Oh, my. He- well, see, now, I have never read this anywhere. This is really going to be a good article. I hope you'll do this, but I, I love this show that you're saying that. So, peanut butter and jelly, which has always been a good standby. As a matter of fact, when hurricane season comes, I make sure that I have peanut butter and jelly around so that we could have it without having any refrigeration. But there are other things, tuna fish and uh, things we should have. <laughs> but um, peanut butter and jelly. Now, there. There is health, I have to say, in peanut butter if it's natural. I love peanut butter, <laughs> and I do eat it. But it, you know, again, uh, a, a, a ki- like a kid in school, every day gets a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So every day, those teeth are washed and uh, and sugar and bacteria, and it's sticking there and giving them a problem. So anything in moderation will probably not kill you yeah, or you, destroy your teeth. You did hit on something, peanut butter and jelly. I never thought about that. So let's go into um, uh, other kinds of foods. So let's say that people are now um, eating a lot of um, hard. You know, hard food. You know, broccoli is hard. Uh, that's probably good because what are they called? They're called crust, uh, crust, crust um, broccoli and cauliflower. What kind of uh, vegetable are they? Crust, 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 they're crust, yucky vegetables. Yeah, right. <laughs> they're good for you. They're good for you. And they're so probably good because they you know, clean your we, teeth, we don't they? Right. They help a little bit. There's, But there's nothing that cleans your teeth better than a toothbrush and dental floss. I mean, whatever you're eating, don't don't rely on that to clean your teeth. Right. Uh, it it uh, the best it's going to do is not promote an environment that's going to cause tooth decay. All right, let's talk about. You said brush your teeth. Now, I know I have a wonderful Sonic. I think it's called Sonic. I have a toothbrush, which is fantastic, and my teeth have never been better. My gums, everything. But um, a lot of people don't do that. They just use a plain toothbrush, and I don't know how how well, that's how good that is. Well, they're they're all good. A plain toothbrush, a sonic toothbrush, any sort of electric toothbrush, all those things can be good. It depends upon how they're used. All right. If if you're a bit fastidious about uh, reaching all the areas, getting along the gum line, getting uh, uh, in between the teeth, getting all the food out, getting everything that sticks and stays around. You're fine, because if it doesn't stick and stay around, the mouth keeps itself clean otherwise. All right? Not a problem. But if you're eating a lot of foods uh, frequently and that stuff's piling up in your mouth, and it does, uh, you're, you're going to have problems. All right. Well, let's, um, let's now move along to the drinks, because I know that that's something you're going to love to talk about. Coffee, tea. What is it doing to discolor your teeth? Well, uh, coffee and tea are, are great stainers. They do stain teeth. And enamel stains uh, fairly easily. As a matter of fact, most of these whitening products, really what they're doing is they're bleaching the stain that's, that's in the outer surface of the teeth. Uh, so uh, coffee and tea are notorious for that. But there are, there are other things that are even worse, and that's a lot of fruit juices, again, with sugar, um, things that are uh, citric fruits and citric juices, um, like grapefruit and things like lemon. These have acids in them. The acids attack the enamel layer on the teeth, weaken it, destroy it, and allow an easy entrance for decay. So if I had a glass of water and I have a half of lemon squeezed in it, that's not good. Uh, not a good idea. Uh, if you do so it a lot. If you do it I a lot. I was doing it every morning because I remember an actress who looked fantastic. She said, that's the secret to my success. She doesn't drink coffee or tea. She has a half, half a glass of hot, no, she has a glass of hot water with a squeezed lemon in it. And you're telling me, I'm hearing something from you. I don't do this every morning, but I try, but I won't do it anymore. Thank you. Well, certainly somebody that is more susceptible to decay at a certain stage, that that would be a real no-no. I think in general, if you do it once a day and you're good with your oral care, and I don't think it's going to be a major problem for anybody. But there are, you know, there are other things, too. I remember in the old days, one of the good things that you could use Coca-Cola for was to take rust off of a bumper of a car. And, you know, that stuff is strong stuff. And there are people that drink Coca-Cola and, and those types of soft drinks, and I'm not going to give the Coca-Cola 
company a bad name per se, but those types of soft drinks, and they drink them all the time, and they're just bathing their teeth into stuff that's damaging. But also they're bathing their body with inside. Well, that's true, too. But, but the teeth, you know, that's so important. Now, I have a friend that does, that loves Cokes. I mean, I, don't, I never drink soda, haven't had it for 10 years but, or 20 years, uh, because I don't like the value of what, what's in there. But she drinks a Coke probably four or five a day. I mean, really. And she does it with a straw so that it doesn't bother her teeth. Well, the reason it bothers her teeth already is that she's been drinking it for a long time and she's had to switch over to the straw because the damage has already been done to some degree. And drinking it through the straw, it's still in her mouth. It's still going to continue to cause the damage, even though it won't hurt as much. You know, if you go down the aisles in the grocery store, you see the huge, now they're 24 in a in a case, I mean, I just can't believe that. It's hard for me. And I, I did tell her once, and I'd stop telling her because it's not going to do any good. But I certainly will play this show, try to get her to listen to the show. I definitely agree with you on, okay, but also you're saying, so it's not just necessarily the, uh, the, the colas, let's say, but it could no. be any kind of the fruit, the fruit drinks. But let's talk about, let's say, orange juice that you buy that's fresh. Is that okay? Orange juice also has acid in it. And yes, you drink a, a small glass of orange juice in the morning, that's fine. If you're not diabetic and you're not having any problems with blood sugar and everything like that, sure. But uh, if, you're drinking, if you're drinking it five or six times a day and continually bathing the tooth in, in that stuff, what happens is it attacks the enamel, it attacks the dentin, it weakens it, it strips it, and that's where you get the sensitivity. Uh, you know, the biggest thing we've been aware of, we've been aware of from this from the very get-go, we have uh, for young infants, you see a, a young child with all decayed teeth, it's generally from what we call baby bottle syndrome, where the mother gives the kid a baby bottle to put them to sleep, and they fall asleep with the nipple in their mouth, and that formula, which is loaded with carbohydrates, is just bathing those teeth. And it's sad when you see a two- or three-year-old kid that has to have all their baby teeth extracted in one shot under anesthesia um, because of that. And that's a really common occurrence. I, even to this I, I wish this would tell you. My mouth is open. I'm going to get flies in it because I can't believe what Dr. Dr. Davidoff is saying. Let me tell you who it is. We're so privileged to have him, Dr. S. Robert Davidoff. He's a prosthodontist, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, he's located in Boynton Beach, and their dental office can be called at 561-203-6211. That's 203-6211. Or you can go to their website, which is dental-implants.com. So, Dr. Davidoff, I know you're not a pair uh, uh you know, a pediatrician or what do you call, a pediatric, pediatric dentist. dentist, but you know so much about that. Yes, so many mothers do that, and, that, and of course. And while we're talking about it, what does a one of the little they, they call them so many different things? The little thing they put in their mouth, a pacifier. The they pacifier. now have other words yeah. for them, but. What is that doing? Is that changing? Well, that, that can cause orthodontic problems with kids that do that for too long a time. Uh, it will flare out the teeth, and you, you'll have to spend a lot of money on, on orthodontics later on to get them straightened out. So um, there, are, there are sorts of things. Well, let's go back to food. Uh, let's talk about food that can damage, actually, the movement of your teeth. Uh, I, I brought up carrots because I think carrots are pretty hard. If you're chewing on a, a hard carrot, like, my, my famous thing was getting a big carrot and eating it. And I one day <laughs> did break a tooth doing it. Uh, it's possible. Carrots certainly aren't the worst thing to chew on. So what's but, the worst but, thing? But. Um, well, something that's hard, like a hard candy. There are a lot of people that don't like to suck on their hard candies. They like to chew them. But and now we know they apart. shouldn't even suck on them because they what you said they, they shouldn't the do sugar. either. But the chewing adds a, adds another barrel to the double barrel uh, effect, where you can actually fracture some enamel or split a tooth. Um, teeth can split. Molars can split in a half uh, just due to forces of chewing down on something hard. It could be something that you chew on accidentally, but it can well be something that you're eating intentionally that's just too hard, and a tooth might be a little bit compromised, 
and if you hit it just at the right angle, it's going to split in half and have to be extracted. Well, we've spent a lot of time on this, and I want to go back into implants because that's really what you're the genius at, making people look beautiful who maybe maybe they weren't even born with the right kind of teeth, and that happens, I'm sure. But let's say the ones who were and they didn't take care of their teeth because of all the things you said, and now they, uh, just because they're 50 or 60, maybe they, you know, some people say, well, why bother with your teeth now? Well, I think you should bother with your teeth now. I think it's more important than ever because you want to stay healthy, and that's what I think implants do. They make you have teeth that will function. It's like, why not have, if you've broken your arm, why not have your arm fixed? Absolutely. It's function and appearance. I mean, uh, you want to, today, in today's society, everybody wants to look as good as they can look. And the thing that that ruins people every single time is a really poor-looking smile. If you're missing teeth or if the teeth are badly shaped, discolored, cracked, uh, turned at angles and stuff like that, uh, it's going to detract from your look. And unfortunately, it's usually the first thing uh, people see. And so fixing it from a cosmetic uh, view, that's fine. But it has to be functional as well. If you're not comfortable chewing, eating, talking, smiling, uh, if your teeth aren't comfortable and uh, free from that uh, uh, sensation, sensitivity, and stuff like that, you're not going to be happy most of the time. It's funny. I've been interviewing people for sales stuff, and what you said is (laughs) true. They That's open. The first you're not thing you look sure. at. You open your mouth and you look at their teeth and right. and you say, okay, you know, because it brings on a lot of things. Well, could they, you know, could they not afford to do something or why they get like that? But it's the first thing that goes to your your eyes. Uh, and I, you know, I'm terrible. I've been in this profession for so long since I was a little kid. Practically, when I talk to people, I have to remind myself to stop staring at their teeth and look at their eyes because that's immediately where I go to their teeth. But everybody, it's like the first uh, first impression that you get from most people is that smile. Right, and and you've said something before, and you did it on our symposium. By the way, we're in our final editing now of this um, television symposium. They had some other very big challenges that came in, and so they put us aside. But um, I told you that I think this before. I reviewed you, and you did a wonderful job. And so we will be taking a little piece of that uh, on the whole show. But I remember what you were saying, that there are people who maybe can't, maybe they already have dentures. And maybe they can have a full mouth of implants. And you have you showed me some little interesting things that they could have, which wasn't it wouldn't be as expensive, and it would hold their dentures in, and it would be good. Why don't you explain that? Absolutely, you're talking basically about over dentures now, which are somewhat like dentures. They have some of the advantages of dentures. A, they're they're very easy to make look really really good. B, they you can take them out and clean your mouth. Thoroughly, which is really a good thing to be able to do. But the difference is you snap them onto the implants and they don't move around. They don't pinch your t- tissue. They, they restore your bite force to almost normal. When you lose your teeth and you go into dentures, you lose 75% of your biting force. So you're, you're back to eating pablum again because you really can't chew carrots or meat or anything else with dentures, not effectively. If you have over dentures, you can chew any, anything you want. Okay, but now how many implants would they have to have to do that? Well, uh, you know, I published the first article on this in the early 90s, but putting two implants in the lower jaw just to support a lower denture makes a total world of difference. That's the way to go then for someone, because if it really works, then they might consider more. If you're looking at economy uh, and you're looking for an economical solution to solve that lower denture problem, lower dentures are the worst thing in the world. I was going to ask you, why are lower dentures different than upper? There's no adhesion. There's nothing for them really to sit on. They're sitting on a thin little ridge with thin tissue. They hurt all the time. My grandmother died with her lower denture, which I tried for years to make her comfortable. This was before implants. Uh, Fortunately, my aunt, I got her early enough, and she's had implants for like 25 years now. But for 
elderly people to wear a lower denture is just almost impossible. So that's where you would like to put the dental implants? Absolutely. All right, and can an older person, if they are in good health, or let's say, m- you know, moderately good health, they can stand what you have to do for them? I mean, is it, is it uh, let's say someone's a diabetic, can they still have that done? Sure, as long as they're a controlled diabetic. A lot of my patients are. And heart but people who've had heart conditions? Oh, every every sort of medical condition. My my patient population comes in with a long history of illnesses and medications they're on. But I generally do a non-surgical procedure when I'm doing these people. In other words, I don't take a scalpel and cut the gums. There's no stitches. Uh, there's... Uh, no bleeding. There's no post-operative pain. It's it's done very quickly, very efficiently. It takes me about five minutes to put an implant in. No mess, five no minutes. fuss, and yeah. And no, it's no, wait, 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 wait. But what's the what do you have to do beforehand? Well, I have to anesthetize. I do have to do that. Okay, and then so how do you? But, but you also have minutes. to take an imp- and you have to an imprint. I mean, you have to see. Well, we have to take our records. But I'm talking about when they actually come in for the implant surgery. Yeah. I anesthetize them. Yeah. Uh, I go, uh, I let them sit and get numb. When they're numb, I come in, and five minutes later, their implants are in place. And they look at me with this mysterious look on their face, like, is that all there is? Because half of them were dreading the situation. They thought it was going to be very painful and very long and everything else. And boom, 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 I'm finished. You should call it the and boom, I can go boom, back boom. into my office and watch my slim box. <laughs> I got that. You should call it the boom, boom, boom. Uh, <laughs> boom, 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 and you're done. All right, but now you've gotten them in, but now you have to, their, their, uh, their dentures have to be separate. Then you, the dentures aren't going to be where the implants are, right? Or they go on and these are over them? Yes. You said you call them over dentures. Right. The dentures fit over the implants. The implants are in the bone, in the ridge, underneath the dentures. And there's a little piece sticking up that the denture snaps onto. Right. And that stabilizes it. It removes all the wiggling around. It it keeps them pain-free. I know the other thing that they people can't can't always eat corn on the cob. Oh, that's very difficult with dentures, really, and when with. But what bad about teeth. regular teeth? Is that also dangerous for corn on the cob? That's a little. Not bit. as far as I'm concerned. No. I love it myself. I do too. All right. Well, I haven't had a problem with that. But my mother used to like that, and she had she had dentures and. And she looked and looked and looked till she could find some of that, but she still was hard. It was still hard. So she would always excuse herself, go to the bathroom, clean her teeth, yeah, and then absolutely. come back. That's what you have to do. Yeah. But change her adhesive. Yeah. yeah. See, so it's not, now people still have to have adhesives, even if you've done the, those two implants. Don't no, they, they don't. No, no, they don't use any. Oh, adhesive wait point. a minute! That's fantastic. No, no, no. no. So no adhesive. There's no reason to do that at that point. All it takes is those two implants. Well, that's something you should really tell yeah. people because that I, must be I, horrible. I published the article on it in, in the you want, you very know, early You know, if you could 90s, find it, I would that, love to read it I think I have a here. copy of Get it. Get it. Let's put it in Boomer but, Times. Uh, we could do that. Uh, it was it was not published in a referee journal. It was just like a throwaway article. But that article was picked up by journals all over the world and republished in several different languages. Well, it was early, and it made, it, it, it made a difference because nobody was doing that with two implants. Nobody thought it would work. Nobody thought it had any value, and today they do it all the time. Well, now, we definitely, I, I now implore you to go get that for our I'll June issue, please. That would be computer. That would be very exciting to say that this is something that you did then. Well, um, what made you, what made you, I guess you are a, you're a techie at heart, and oh, I yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so you mix that with your dental practice, and of all your superb practice, you know, being a prosthodontist gave you a lot more training. But um, what was there a particular thing that happened that made you really do that? Is it because you saw so many patients that you felt so sorry for? Right. I'd have patients come in, and uh, we talked to them about what, what we could do for them and the expenses. And basically, the expenses were prohibitive for most patients. Uh, they weren't able to... 
afford some of the things that were available at that time, which were uh, full mouth implants with uh, six implants in the lower jaw and six implants or eight implants in the upper jaw and spending forty or fifty or sixty thousand dollars. But when I first started doing it, for $1,250 to stabilize their lower denture, they were lining up at my door. And that's where I started my practice when I first came to Boca, Boca Raton in the early 90s. See, now, as much as we've been talking, we have, I've never heard this story before. Um, so you were able to do that. Now, has it improved since you've done it? Are new techniques, new things since 1990? Well, uh, we developed a newer attachment, a better attachment for the implants to snap onto. And, of course, there's been a lot of talk about mini implants, which can be used in that situation as What's well. What's a mini implant? A mini implant is an implant that's uh, much smaller than a regular implant, much thinner. Uh, and uh, it's used uh, by... A, a lot of people in place of regular implants, supposedly as a more economical solution, if they're being fair and charging less for it. It's unfortunately something that I don't recommend for a lot of people. It's good in very select circumstances. It's very overused in the profession, and the failure rates are, are too high for what I would consider a good application. So let's not do that. No mini implants, anybody. Forget it. All right, let's go back to what you were talking about. So now you have, though, there must be some new stuff that you're using, though, that you didn't do before, as you were saying, with the with your implants. I mean, what, what technology has changed? Is the material different? Is the time different? Uh, i got to tell you, we've, we've changed how the, the timing and we change the surfaces on the implants to speed thing up, things up. So where we used to wait six months for an implant to cook, now we can wait six weeks. Uh, we've gotten technology for immediate implants, so we can uh, take a tooth out, put an implant and a crown in right away, same visit. Wow, uh, Dr. David Dolph, like you know, it's just wonderful to... Uh, to have you do this with us all the time. And now we expect that article for our June issue. We also, I, I, here, I want to have some more stuff. Maybe after that, I want to talk about the kinds of foods. But thank you very much. I know you have to go back to your patients, but we appreciate. I always learn so much for myself. I feel so selfish. No more peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Okay. <laughs> thank you. You're Indiana. welcome. Bye. Bye-bye.